It's time to plan for March in our altered book bullet junk journal. I will introduce my new set of freebies as well as some other printables for you created especially for the month of March. And also I will include a very quick book review of some books I've read since my last video and I will be adding those to my journal as well. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. Let me start off by showing you the new kit for March. So again, the free, for the freebies, we have a 10K step tracker. We also have a regular habit tracker. And I tried to make this kit kind of like in a spring vibe because I think most of us are probably ready for spring right now. We, of course, have the March monthly overview. Then, of course, we have our weeklies. Four pages of those and... Oh, sorry, five actually. And then we have the habit tracker where you can just add any habit you want to track and you can just track it throughout the month. So this is very versatile. So those are all of the freebies. And then if you want add-ons, so to say, if when you want to use the same things that I will be using in my altered book, I have this one set of clip art. So this is French floral clip art. Beautiful different florals here. And then we have four butterflies to go with them as well. Then we have the notes in the same theme. So here are six different notes. And as always, we have our little labels to go with the same color scheme with March. So these are for your to-dos and for your gratitudes. And these are for the welcome page for March. And then we have eight new backgrounds. So let me just quickly show you these. So these are called French floral backgrounds. So there's one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, and eight. And I love how they all kind of have some coffee stains on them to make them just a little bit more vintage and grungy looking. I love these like wallpaper background, very French looking. In my February video, this is the spread that we did together. And then I just wanted to show you the rest of the month, what they ended up looking like. They're all super simple, which is what I like. And so now we have to continue with March here. And I just wanted to show you also another thing I did. So this one I did in the video, but then this is another collage I did off camera. I did, I think I did post this on Instagram. And this is actually using a, using quite a few digitals from a kit from Louisa Heinzel. I will link this kit for you below as well if you want to check that out. And I think the rest you have seen actually. I did continue with my 10K step tracker. What I ended up doing here is, I think I explained last time that I use, now instead of walking, a lot of times in winter I do fitness at home because I just don't always feel like going out when it's so cold. So the yellow ones are my fitness. And then I started, if I did fitness, like for example, I did my fitness hour in the morning and then the afternoon I took a walk, then I just added that on top. So if I walked... 5,000 steps, then I added the 5,000 on top of my fitness. So that's another way maybe you could do it. If you happen to do both, I'm quite proud of myself so far. We are in the middle of February when I'm filming this. So what I want to do now is like I've done in January, I want to do a summary page for February. So for that, I'm going to use 
one of the papers that were in the kit for February. So I'm going to use this one, which is I think the most floral one, which will then be a nice transition to March, which also has some lovely florals. So I will just cut this down and ink up the edges and then glue that as a background. As a reminder, when I glue down these backgrounds I'm only gluing the edges down not in the middle because I don't want my pages to get stiff I did that in my first altered book bullet junk journal and I I mean the pages were thicker themselves but they of course got even more stiff because I was putting glue everywhere so I wanted to avoid that and this is working really well and of course I'm linking all of these printables for you below the February and the March ones but of course you don't need to use these to enjoy having a bullet junk journal okay let's get right into also doing the welcome page for March so let me choose a background that's going to work well with this one over here I think they all pretty much will actually I'm going to use this one here so again I will just trim that down always leaving a little bit of a border ink it up and then glue that down and I will also link the playlist of my plan with me's for this junk journal down in the description box for you as well just in case you haven't seen how I made this book and how I started this book and making the cover etc so all of that will be in that playlist okay now I just saw I didn't measure this well because look you see here some of the text but I'm just gonna leave it trying not to be perfectionist about things okay so now I still kept some of the printables from February so that I could do this February summary page so I do have the heading all ready to go, February summary. And then I have some of those clip art pieces already cut and inked up, ready to go. And I'm also going to be using this, which was one of the note cards from February. So I can here write the summary about how February was. Now that I kind of know the placement of the things I want to add, I think this is a great opportunity to add some more washies. And I chose these colors because these colors would kind of help to tie these two pages together by using similar colors to what we have here on the right side. So of course need to put the washies before I glue these down. not sure yet what I want to do up here but th this here is ready to be glued down and also here I am just putting the glue on my edges I don't like my pages too busy so I don't want to add a whole bunch of stuff on them I think I'm just gonna leave it not put anything else underneath and I'm not lining these two up because this creates more interest and more of a dynamic like this so very simple already looks like spring I think <laughs> okay so now we need the welcome page for March and I have already fussy cut and inked up some of my pieces here to play with. So I have the Hello March. And this time I've inked these with some 
black suit instead of my usual vintage photo just to try something else so there's the hello march and i will of course keep the summary for my last page of march again and then i have these floral elements to play with and the butterflies and of course my little notes I've printed actually two, two pages of those so that I have in total now 12 of these notes. So if we go back to the welcome page for February, we can see what I did there. So it's just an intro page with a little bit of collaging. I did add a fabric tab. I think I will do that again. I will probably do that for each beginning of the month so I can find them easily. And then I always add a quote as well. I would like to add some more texture to this page. So I will do that by trying to find a piece of fabric that I can add underneath this Hello March. I have here my drawers of fabric scraps. So let's see if there's anything that would work here with our colors. Hmm, I'm thinking maybe this one because I think this again has similar colors to our opposite page. So again, I think that would tie in very nicely. So I'm going to take my large pinking shears and cut around this. Again, I'm just going to use my tacky glue to glue this down. I think the fabric is thick enough that it won't seep through and my glue is coming out thin enough that I won't have that problem, I think. And for my quote, I'm going to pick something from my nature quotes. And I think I want to use this one here that says, all things bloom with love. I will link my nature quotes for you below as well. But you can use any quote. You can hand write a quote. You can just Google for maybe spring quotes or something like that. And you will find a beautiful selection. And I think I'm going to add this using my new vintage notes which I will also link for you, but you could just also use a post-it. If you maybe have some cute post-its, you could just stick a post-it here with a quote, handwrite a quote. In this case, I'm just gonna use this. I'm going to cut around this because this is too wide to fit any of my quote notes. So first I just need to choose one. I'm going to take this one and I love how they already have coffee stains on them. I'm just going to ink around this with my vintage photo. Just a note itself, not the tape on top. And then I'm going to cut around this. And this time I left it white. I just distressed the outer ed edges with my vintage photo because this time I actually want it to stand out from my note here. I don't want it to blend in too much. Then maybe we can add some of these. That works very well together to have some blooming flowers with this quote, I think. That kind of just worked out. And let's add a butterfly on top. And then I think this page is also ready to go. I just need to add the fabric tab as well. I'll just glue all of these down first. And it makes sense to me to use this same cute floral fabric for the tab for our page. So I'll just cut out a rectangle, trying to keep them approximately the same width. Again, just using my tacky glue on the ends here. And then I want to keep staggering these, so I will try to place it in the right place. <laughs> Obviously, if you want your tab underneath the background on both sides, then of course you do this before you put down your background. So you have to decide you want it on top or below. I usually have mine on top 
actually usually mostly because i forget about it until i have my background done <laughs> okay so now these are staggered nicely like this and just to give you a quick view from the top so i am pretty much halfway and i'm only starting march so this book is not going to hold a lot of months but that's okay whenever it ends i will just start a new book and some of you have been asking me like how many pages i tear out and how do i know how many pages to tear out i can honestly just say for me it's been a an experiment in each book like a trial and error in, in each book I, I started out with seven pages which worked perfectly for my other journal which was this one here so that really worked out well you see here it's nice and evenly spaced just at the end i realized that i didn't have enough to finish my december so i didn't tear any out at the very end but throughout the book seven seemed like the perfect number for this book which had a lot thicker pages so i think it really depends on how thick your pages are mostly these pages are a lot thinner I've been tearing out seven and, and I'm, re I'm realizing it wasn't enough. I already started adjusting in February because you see the book is already becoming a gator mouth, which is something I don't really appreciate in my planner. So I've already last time adapted this to tear out 10 pages. So we have this page and now I'm going to tear out 10 pages. My goal is just to keep the book as flat as possible. And one important reminder, if this is the first time you're doing one and you're using this method, please use a book with glued in pages rather than sewn in pages. And you can tell whether they're glued in or sewn in by checking in, in the middle to see if anywhere you see any thread and any sewing if you don't see that then your book is glued together which is exactly what we need because otherwise if you tear out pages randomly with a sewn book other pages will come out because of course you're tearing out one half and then the other half is loose because it's missing its counterpart right so that is not a good thing so now i didn't count you can't talk and count at the same time two more and I tried to get some of this out here in the middle that is left from the tearing. I didn't at first, but I'm realizing if, if a lot stands out, and especially if your pages are kind of thick, then of course your pages don't turn so nicely because you have this big thing here in the middle that's going to hinder them from turning well. And then as always, I'm just going to glue these two pages together to hide all that tearing. Again, I'm just gluing on the edges. And in this case, it looks like I'm gluing the <laughs> fabric tab in, but that's totally fine. Maybe even preferable, I don't know. I don't mind that it's not showing on this page. I'm just kind of like half shutting it to glue it better so that they match up better, the two pages. Next step, of course, is then to choose backgrounds, trim them the size you want to go on your pages, put them down and then add whatever you want to add next. In my case, I think I'll add the monthly overview on one side and my 10K step tracker on this side. But actually, before I do that, I want to do my book review. So this is a spread I made in the first episode where I made this journal and I was using some stamps that I had gotten from the Your Creative Studio subscription box. I don't remember which month and I cut them out and I glued them onto this background and that's how I'm tracking how many books I'm reading. My goal was to read once a month, but I'm actually reading a lot more, which is really surprising me. <laughs> but if you want to make a page like this and you don't have a nice book stamp, I have one recommendation for you. Go check out Maureen's tutorial. I will link that one for you below as well. And she teaches you how to make pages if you want to track your books for your planner or for wherever you want to track them. It's all free and she uses the free version of Canva. So please 
head over there and check that out. It's, it's really awesome. So again, I'm going to color in the amount of books that I have read since my last time. And I'm going to quickly show you the books and give you a super mini review of what they are about, just in case you're looking for some good books as well. So last time I was in the middle of the book Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. And this is one of the books that I never wanted to end. For me, this is a definite five-star historical fiction novel. It's a family saga set in Korea between 1911 and Tokyo 1989. And we're following a girl named Sunja who becomes pregnant by a married Jakuza, which is kind of like the mafia. And her family would face ruin because of this. But then a Christian minister offers a chance of salvation by marrying her and taking her to Japan. So following a man she barely knows to a hostile country, having no family, friends or a home is just the beginning of this amazing family saga. It is quite thick but I kind of breezed through it because I could not put it down loved 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 this book so I'll be adding this with the five star rating for the stars I've been using this stamp set I believe I got this locally because it's in German here but I don't remember where from I've had it for a long time I'm going to stamp this using my jet black archival ink I don't want this to smear so I'm using a permanent ink for this and obviously I didn't plan this well because I have this book tab right where my fifth star should be. <laughs> Good job. So I'm going to have to put my stars a little more. Oh, and it's a different stamp. Oh no, I used a different stamp. <laughs> I thought it's the same stars there. Oh well. Very wonky and crooked. I'm going to oh, well. use my yellow Tombow marker to color in the five stars oh my goodness this is so crooked great lesson to not be so perfectionist wow the next book i read was strange weather in tokyo by hiromi kawakami this is a best-selling japanese novel and is about tsukiko who is a young lady who meets her former high school teacher in a local bar and over the next few months, they keep running into each other and they also meet up intentionally as the seasons pass and eventually develop a hesitant intimacy that tilts awkwardly towards love. Honestly, I was bored reading this and stopped about halfway into the story. For me, as far as I could tell, nothing was happening and even their conversations were not so interesting to me. So I gave up halfway through the book, even though you can see it's not a thick book, but I just thought I have so many other books that I hope to enjoy more. I didn't want to waste more time on this one. So I don't know how to rate this with a star. Maybe I should just put in here DNF, did not finish. That is a term I learned through booktube. <laughs> the next book made up for this, <laughs> it's called Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Grodin. This is an alternate history novel set in Germany in 1956. So it's been over 10 years since the Nazis won the war and a 17 year old Yael is part of the resistance and her mission is to kill Hitler. And to get close enough to do that, she has to win the biggest and longest motorcycle race, which takes her across the territory of the Third Reich, starting in Germania and ending in Tokyo. This is an extremely fast paced novel and I really loved it. I will give it 4.5 stars since I did not love the writing style quite as much as I did my other five star books, but still really loved this one. I really love having these in my journal, not only to remind me of what I read and what I liked, but also it kind of makes me reflect on the books more rather than just putting it down and taking up the next one. I'm actually thinking about what is my review and what did I like and what did I not like? And it kind of makes me spend 
more time with these books. Oh no, I colored in five. <laughs> it was only supposed to be four and a half. <laughs> to fix that, I'm just going to take a black Tombow and color in half of the four. I'm really not doing a great job with this page. <laughs> so the next one I read was The Snow Child by Eowyn Ivy. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Oh my gosh, this was another one that I did not want to end. So this is a Sunday Times bestseller. It's a magical realism novel, which I was really completely in love with and immersed in. Alaska in the 1920s, where Jack and Mabel have moved to for a fresh start in a remote homestead. A little girl keeps appearing mysteriously on their land. So is she what she seems? And can they find room in their hearts for her? I could really feel the beautiful winter landscape of Alaska in this book. And I love the subtle magical elements in it. I completely connected with the characters and I just wanted to carry this around with me everywhere. Not that I'm going anywhere these days, <laughs> but even just from room to room. And I think I read this like in three days because I just could not put it down. And I'm not adding this one yet because I'm not done with it, but currently I'm reading Blood for Blood. So this is the second book after the wolf by wolf this kind of has an ending which is kind of like a cliffhanger so i had to read the second book so i'm about yeah a little over halfway in that one so i will let you know about that one in the next one so that gave me four bit four books and i will just color in the covers of these next four books i chose a different color for this month so i thought maybe this way I can then see which books I read in which month. I don't know if that's useful <laughs> information, probably not, but I just wanted to switch it up. So I'll just color in three more of these. Let's move back to our new pages and let's add our new backgrounds here. Just a small tip, when I trim these, I usually trim the middle part out. So I mark the, the size and then I cut that size from both sides because the middle with my digitals is usually the one that has the least decoration. So here you see I have some florals and some coffee stains. So I want those on my pages. So that's why I do that. So here I'm going to add my monthly Actually, I'm covering up all the beautiful florals underneath. <laughs> so this is where I will usually add my videos so that I keep track of which video I have when. So this is where we are right now. <laughs> Obviously, if you're not doing videos, this is not going to be interesting for you. But maybe you could add things like birthdays or any other kind of appointments in case you have any kind of appointments at the moment you could add those there just to have like a monthly overview i think that's very helpful or even if you don't add anything you could use them just to have a visual overview of the month i always think that's helpful just so i kind of have a feeling of where i am in the month and this of course is my 10k step tracker which will hopefully be very cool <laughs> Okay, turning this over again, I'm going to be tearing out 10 pages and then we'll glue them together. And if you're not sure what to do with all your torn out book pages, check out my recent video on making some fun book page ephemera. I will link that one for you below as well. So now again, we'll just glue these two together they have to hide the tearing. I forgot to do this with these here, but since I have distressed all my little notes and, and all the fussy cut images with the black suit, it totally makes sense to use the same black suit 
for the edges of the backgrounds rather than my vintage photos, which I started here already. So I'm just gonna go over it with the black. So these two pages I'm going to leave blank for right now. These are the two pages the same as I had in February that I left free to do anything I wanted on them just to have a little bit of freedom in this very structured book. <laughs> I'll so, do something on one of these two later on in this video. But first I wanted to just show you one of the weekly spreads. So again, I will be tearing out 10 pages. And by the way, the leftover scraps that you have from cutting down your pages to fit your book, you can use to make another collage masterboard. So how fun, you can use up everything. And just in case you're interested in what kind of fitness or exercise I'm doing at home, what I do is I just search in YouTube. I usually do low impact, full body workout. And that way I don't get anything with jumping. They are still strenuous, <laughs> but you don't jump, which is a good thing if you're living in a flat like me and you have neighbors downstairs. <laughs> and I usually choose some that are around 30 minutes long. So then I do two back to back. I, I set up a playlist. I think I have like nine different fitness playlists so that I can alternate between them. They each have like either two half hour workouts or three 20 minute workouts or something that will come to an hour and that works really well. And usually I turn off all the sound, like I watch it once to actually hear what they're saying with their instructions. I turn off the sound completely because once you've heard it, I don't know, I don't wanna listen to it <laughs> numerous times, the same instructions. So I just turn off the sound and I put on my own music. And that way it's really fun and the time goes fast and I'm usually drenched in sweat at the end of it or actually even midway. I'm drenched in sweat. So I know it's working. So that's a good feeling. And if you want something like softer, like you're, you don't want to do like full fitness. So this is my first weekly for March, by the way. If you don't want to do like full on fitness, you can also search for indoor walking. I have found these last year in when we had the first lockdown. And I really thought those were fun. So they combine walking with some other lighter exercise and I'm sure you could find some fun ones as well. So here I'm just trying to choose two notes, one for my gratitude and one for my to-do list. So this time I'm not covering up all these beautiful florals, so that's good. <laughs> So I'm gonna take some of these pre-cut out and inked up labels. So my gratitude here, so this time they are in green to match the theme. And then I'll put this week on here. And I don't wanna add too much because of these florals, there's already a lot going on. Maybe we can just add an accent of something. Let's see, if we add a small floral, will that be too much? No, that's cute actually. So maybe I move this down a little bit. And as I am filming this video, I'm trying to motivate myself internally <laughs> to go for a walk after the video before I eat. It has snowed again last night. So when I look out my window, I see white roofs. So I guess that's kind of nice. I mean, in the city, of course, the snow gets very dirty and slushy very quickly. So it's not always fun to walk in the snow in the city. I am very close to the city center here in Vienna, but I think I will do it anyway. I'm sure fresh air is good. Sometimes I really have to force myself when it's winter to go outside, but I know it's good for me. <laughs> I mean, if I manage 5,000 steps, then I'll be happy. I've already done my exercise this morning, so I'm being a very good girl. But it's not always easy to be motivated to be physically active when actually it's cold and all you want to do is sit on the couch and read a good book or journal in your journal. <laughs> Guess you have to make it into a routine. If you have the luxury, of course, and me working from home, I am super lucky to be able to plan my day as I want it. So I feel like I have no excuse not to put in time and effort to take care of myself. Okay, so much rambling today. <laughs> okay, I think this page looks very much like spring. 
And so now I will continue off camera with the following weeks. You kind of have seen again what I'm doing. So let's see what I can do maybe on one of these two pages. I found this cute little pocket in my drawer where I keep all my beautiful things that I have received from Happy Mail. And so this one has a tuck spot here and a pocket here. And I thought this would fit so well to our theme right here, even though it is a bit bulky. But look, the colors are exactly the colors of my tab. Actually, this is almost the same. This is amazing. And it totally screams spring, I believe. The green is similar to this green here. So this has to go here. Like there's no other, no, no other place to put this in. And I think I'm going to add this so that this is a pocket as well, even though I don't know yet what I will put inside, but it's always good to have extra pockets. So I will be gluing these three sides down. And for this, I'm going to use my three in one glue as I believe it is a stronger glue than my tacky glue. And I really want to make sure that since this is quite a thick card that it will not come off. Let's add some clamps to make sure these stick down well. And let's make a tag to go in here. And since we have our book pages right here, why don't we use these? And I think I'm going to glue three together because they are very thin. And this time I want this to get stiff. So I'm going to use my glue stick and put it on the hole whole surface. Now let's measure how wide our tag can be. Let's say about here and up here. I'm gonna try to cut this like this. Thinking of Tina from Shabby Dabby Duda. <laughs> At least I have a bit of a guidance here with the text so that I'm not completely off. But Tina is just amazing at cutting things just like that. No measurements, no trimmer. Okay, let's check the height. I actually want to leave this on top here. All right, what do we do with the edges? Do we just round them? Do we actually make a tag shape? Let's make a tag shape. Let's make a hole. Add a hole reinforcement. These have been distressed with my vintage photo. Put it on the front and the back. And then I'm going to ink this up with my vintage photo. And I also found this scrap here, which is from a, an Austrian garden magazine. So I thought this might be really pretty if we Fussy cut this and add this to our tag. And I think the colors work well with the pocket. So let's fussy cut this. That's cute. I like it. Let's see if I can find another butterfly maybe to go on here. And by the way, I'm now using this beautiful band here with this gorgeous dragonfly that I also received in Happy Mail. I love this so much. So I have a little pocket here which mainly or only has only has butterflies. It's a mixture of some from the Digital Collage Club and some are from mine and some are from I don't know where. But maybe there is one that we can put here. Oh, I already like that one actually. What about green? Green might be too matchy-matchy, huh? I don't know. Yellow and green. Oh, we have yellow on the other page. So, oh, yes, I think this, this will be it. Yes, I like that. Definitely needs feelers. So this is my ribbon box. This is almost all the ribbons I have. And that's totally enough for me. So what do we want? I would say either something yellow or something pink or even something green. <laughs> 
any of the colors we have here don't really have a lot of green like that well actually i have this oh <laughs> both of these colors are actually gorgeous yep or i was also thinking of this one here which is a beautiful soft pink but i think yeah hmm okay let's see if we take the uh what do we take green or pink maybe the pink really only have this last bit left i don't want it super bulky so i think the way to go is to just thread it through not even tie it and then to cut it and then to take a thin thread maybe this avril yarn that has the green in it we can try that that could be fun if you are in need of beautiful Avril yarns like I have here, just search for Avril yarn on Etsy, for example. And Avril yarn is spelled A-V-R-I-L. There's many, many shops and I can sh I'm sure you can find something that is in or near the country you live in. So I'm just going to make a knot and then a double knot and then make a little bow. Maybe even leave the end, ends dangling like this. And finally, let's find a sentiment to go here. And I think I want something in black to really stand out. I will link these black ones for you as well. Oh, I like this one. Make a wish. Let's make a wish. Can't hurt to make a wish. We just get rid of the white edge. Okay, let's see how this will look in our little pocket. I like it. I think it works really well with the colors. We have the yellow on both here. Oh, I think it's really cute. We have some texture. It's not bulky because we didn't make a knot with the big ribbon. How cool. And I also want to add something to this little tuck spot here. And I thought I could try adding parts of one of these. These are just very thick vintage book pages on which i have decoupaged napkin and then from the way it feels i've also added some clear gesso on top so i'm thinking either the bird just cut him out because again we have the yellow or this little bird that would also work but he's kind of lost almost in these flowers i think he will make a better focal point I don't trust my paper trimmer to trim without tearing this old book page, so I would rather just do it manually. This might be a bit big, we shall see. I've, I've made these book pages such a long time ago and I never knew what to do with them because they are very thick, but of course they're perfect for tags. Let's see about the size and maybe we'll round the corners. It's a bit big. Let's add another sentiment here. Curiosity there. Then I'm going to round the corners. So let's put this little guy in his new home. And as a final touch, I want to add something here. And this will also make these two pages co cohesive because this is one of the clip art from, from the same kit. So there we go. I think it's super cute. Loving these pale colors for spring. I still need to add something here. I will show you that in the next video. And I need to figure out what to do with this page. Thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you enjoy the digitals as well as working in your own altered book. Please give it a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't, if you want to see more and hope to see you back next time. Love you guys. Mwah. Mwah.